I was just asked a great question by Doyle Bros Lawn Care. And he said, Keith, can you make a video on staying organized while so many freaking calls are coming in while I'm working? Can't handle it. I'm 15 estimates deep in trying to work during the day. Much appreciated. So, I want to answer that the best of my ability. What's up? It's Keith Kelfus, landscaping employee, trap dog. Okay, that's the thing. You're only one person, and you only have so many hours in a day. And being a small business owner and being a family man and everything, you're switching hats so much. And in the beginning, you have to do that. You don't have a choice. So you have to put on, you know, the guy in the phone hat, and then the sales and estimator hat. Then you got to put on the worker guy hat. Then you got to put on the paperwork guy hat. Then you got to put on the family man hat. And you got to put on all these different hats, like musical chairs, to the point you can you can do it very well for a while, and then it starts to grind and wear you down. And the worst place you can get, and I'm glad that where you're at. Is the worst place is where contractors get depressed and then they get freaked out by the phone and they get to the point where they're in anxiety and they can't even pick up the phone and that's much more common than you might think it's very 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 common for contractors landscapers lawn care guys that they don't even pick up the phone anymore because they just can't handle it and one reason why it's it's logical it's also emotional it's because there's so many crap phone calls coming through phone calls from telemarketers um, people trying to sell you stuff, the health insurance marketplace, the funding department, more telemarketers. Um, and then even when it's customers, some of them, you know, so maybe one out of what, five phone calls is a, is a, is a good lead. So that's very time consuming picking up the phone. And, and you're like, I know if I pick up this phone call right now, it's going to waste my time. So you don't pick up the call. Um, so how do you deal with it? Well, there's many ways. One is you could do it all yourself. Uh, I was p picking up the phone because what do people say? You got to pick up your phone. It's the most important thing. You got to pick up your phone, right? Well, should you pick up your phone while you're on a ladder? No. Should you pick up your phone while you're in the middle of with the backpack blower and turn it off to pick up your phone? No. Should you pick up the phone while you're on the mower? No. Should you pick up the phone while you're on the weed whip? No. When should you pick up the phone? Well, if you need to get every single dang lead that comes through, then you got to keep stopping and doing it. You have to do it. There's no other way in the beginning. Now, here's another tactic that works. You answer phone calls twice a day. The next one. At noon and then at 4 p.m. or when you get off work. So every single day at noon, what I would do is while the guys are eating... I'd peace out and I'd go in the truck and I would get on the phone the whole time and then just scarf down my food real quick or eat while I'm driving and I'd spend lunch break returning phone calls and getting back to clients. Um, you can go into a victim state where you're upset because you're like, I can't even have lunch. You're like, that's bullshit, dude. That's why you get paid more because you're the business owner and that's why you get paid more because you deal with all that. But uh, I'm going to get into the virtual assistant secretary thing in a second and uh, by no means am I an expert at this. I mean, dude... Um, just the night before last night, dude, I worked 11 hours. I got home and I knew I had 17 phone calls to return. My secretary just got back from vacation and I wasn't going to put all that on her. And I knew that I had to do it. I'm in the process of hiring another virtual secretary right now. Um, so another call answering center to that they're very well trained. It's called uh, Jill's Office, okay? I heard about it in the window cleaning community by Sid Graff, so I'm this close to hiring them. But um, you can have, uh, if you have a wife or a girlfriend, if she doesn't mind, if she likes doing it and she wants to get paid to do it, or, you know, you know, just because she's your wife doesn't automatically mean she has to work for your company because a lot of wives want zero to do with their husband's businesses at all, right? It just doesn't work, and if it doesn't work, don't keep trying. The shit works or it doesn't, right? And everybody has different timings. But anyways, um, back to the noon thing. So here's another thing that works. So you say every single day at this time, I don't care what's going on, I'm checking out of the job site and I'm sitting in the truck for a full hour and I'm returning all these dang calls. Now there's a point when it's really busy where you could be stuck in your truck all day. 
I mean, once a spring gets cracking, I can't do any physical work. The very, very little physical work. My job is selling jobs, talking on the phone, processing invoices, collecting money, and being a gopher and going around and collecting materials and making sure everything's running. And then the guys, they do all the work because I, I literally can't do the work. There's so many, so much to do. So, yeah, pick a couple times during the day that you shut off everything and you handle the most important phone calls and you have to let everything else go to voicemail. If you can't get to it, to it, you can't get to it. It's literally just a matter of fact. You can only do so much. So you can set up kind of a qualification process the way you market your business, uh, your voicemail. You can screen all your calls. You can get a uh, text voice to text function. I have T-Mobile, it's like three bucks a month. So all the voicemails get transcribed into a text. I can sort through them and listen to them real quick and just literally just delete all the ones that don't sound like they're even credible or my customer and don't even pick up the phone for them. The ones that do, call them back as soon as possible, get on the phone and sell them over the phone or schedule a quote. So uh, like I said the other night, I know I'm jumping around here and I have a lot of time um, and I respect your time. But so I get home from work, I'm exhausted. I take a shower and uh, I eat dinner with my wife and then I lay down in bed just like, oh, oh my God, I have to return 17 phone calls and it's like 8 p.m. And I'm like, I don't even want to do this right now. I can't do this. I can't do this. Get your ass up and do it, Kelfus. I can't do this. Get your ass up and do it, Kelfus. I can't do this. If you don't, there are people calling right now, your voice mailbox is full, and they're trying to give you money. Get your ass up and get on the phone right now, Kelfus. I get up, get my phone out, start calling them back. Hi, this is Keith with Kelfus Professional Services. Yeah, uh, you left a message, you were looking for a quote. Okay, awesome, yeah. Okay, can you describe your project a little bit over the phone or what you need done? Mm-hmm. And dude, I just banged them all out, customer after customer after customer, looking at their houses on Google, giving them quotes. I booked out all day Saturday for quotes. I closed four jobs over the phone and um, got every last call back, uh, returned every last call. And I got to do it again uh, tonight. So now my secretary's back. She's up and running. And what I do, here's how you can hire a secretary, and I can make a whole video about this. You don't have to hire a full-time secretary to answer the phone and put them on payroll and work comp and go rent on an office and spend $3,000 a month for a secretary to sit in an office answering phones. It's not like that anymore. We're in a virtual world. So now you can hire a calling center or a virtual assistant. Go on upwork.com and hire a secretary for, for 18 bucks an hour, right? Jill's office, it's, it's per minute, right? Uh, my secretary, I pay her 12 bucks an hour plus bonuses. So what I do is I take every single voicemail that comes through on my phone, she has her own work phone as well, and all the voicemails that come through my phone, I get all the landscaping calls, she gets all the window cleaning calls. The reason why is she can close them and sell them over the phone off Google Earth. She's just trained to do that. I've created scripts for her, like a whole system, so she can just do it over the phone. If she needs something, she sends me the property on Google Earth. I look at it. But most of the time, the landscaping ones come to my phone. Anything else that's funny, um, I literally take the voice to text, or if I can't get to it, and I forward it to her email, so she gets the, 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 the emails, the voicemail, the actual audio, and the transcription. So she gets them all loaded up in her email. She gets on there. She calls them all back. And then we communicate back and forth on Voxer. So I think that you should hire a secretary uh, as soon as possible. Somebody to balance your QuickBooks, to manage all the invoices, to collect money, to do the paperwork, and all that. If you don't have the time for that and you've got your, say, you're, you do lawn care and you've got the business on autopilot. Um, and it's just you and one crew. You're gonna to have to do it in between or do it at night and call all your customers back at night. I mean, the stress of running a small business, especially if you have a family, it really, really hits you hard and it'll pry on you and it will send you into anger, anxiety, frustration, even depression. Uh, there's waves where you get motivated and you tackle it. But 
So the, the saying you can't do everything yourself, I think that's crap because you can do everything yourself. The question is how long can you do it for? Because maybe you haven't hit the plateau or the burnout phase yet where you just can't do it all anymore. And when I was talking about switching multiple hats, you can do that for a while, but it gets exhausting. So I'm at the point now uh, where I know I can't do it all at once. If I'm, if I'm doing landscaping, I'm doing landscaping and I leave my phone in the truck. If I'm on the phone, I'm returning all the phone calls at once and I'm sitting there for two, three hours straight. I don't care what it takes. Same with paperwork. That's all I'm doing at that time and I don't want to do anything else. Um, now, there's, it's not an all or none thing. It's, not a, it's, it's kind of always like a gray area because, of course, you can't just sit on the phone while something's blowing up outside of your truck. You got to go attend to it. What I mean is you're leaning more towards batching and less of, less of multitasking. Now, that type of thing gets people angry, but what I'm saying is if you think you can multitask all day and be on your phone at, as a leash all day, you're going to pull your hair out. It's, it's just not going to work. So that's why setting predetermined times to retalk on the phone is better, right? Dude, there was times where I was locked up for literally an entire week and I couldn't even answer the phone. I was in such a dark place that I was letting my voicemail fill up and I didn't even care. We had so much work coming in, I couldn't even handle it. And at that time, that's when I finally broke down and hired like a secretary to do it all. Oh, secretary is amazing. Oh God. Secretary will change your life, bro. So charge your call, your customers, raise all the prices a buck and then take that money and then pay for the sec the part-time secretary. Even if she's three hours a week, even if she's 12 hours a week and have her get back with all the customers. And then you say, yeah, but what if, what if she doesn't know what to say? And I don't know how to train her. I don't even have time for that. Exactly. You don't have time. So that means why you got to stay up till three o'clock in the morning with bags on your eyes and write out all the scripts on Google Docs of exactly what to say, how to talk to the customers, do role playing on the phone with her, send her videos of the properties or him or her, whoever. Who, so she understands what to do, bring her to work with you for a day or hire somebody who has some experience in the construction or landscaping trade so they understand the lingo, which is very important, and they might not work out and you might have to fire them and hire somebody else. And then you like feel like you just wasted all this time and money. Dude, it's Helter Skelter, it's a shit show. You're gonna kiss a lot of frogs. And I think that um, when you can get yourself to the point where you're in a non-reactive state you don't feel guilty. You don't let customers, customers guilt trip you. And you realize your bucket has some holes in it. And so the next thing is raising all the prices. If your phone's ringing that much, dude, raise the prices. Because now you're in a beautiful spot. It's a good problem to have because, you know, beggars can't be choosers. This is the opposite. This is opportunity overwhelm. The funny thing about our business, mostly being seasonal, is that it gets really, 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 really busy and then it gets dead. So if you try to go hire a bunch of guys when it gets busy and then all of a sudden it just drops off, you know, you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on marketing to be able to keep that going. So that's why you should only hire a part-time freelance virtual secretary to pick up the phone, right? And then I don't know what the laws are in your state about hiring people. That's not what this video is about. But a lot of landscapers just hire guys during the busy months and get rid of them when they're, when they're not so busy. But then you have another problem with that because if you're cutting corners and not doing things legitimate, then you're running a slippery slope that way as well. So um, I think that's a huge crux in the landscape maintenance or lawn care business is it being a seasonal business and you being the, the, the owner, you have to find a way, unless you put them on unemployment, uh, to keep them busy year round or put them on unemployment. Now you have to make enough money for that. So if you're scrambling and pulling your hair out trying to do it at once, trying to do it all at once all by yourself and answer the phones, there's a reason for that. Because if you were making plenty of money and plenty of profit margin, it wouldn't have been a question. You'd just have a secretary hire it. Uh, hire a secretary to do the work. Uh, to answer the phones and help help you with all that stuff. But most every lawn care guy that I know doesn't have a secretary unless, you know, they've got like at least three crews out 
and they're at the point where they're not only doing lawn care, they're doing fertilizing and pest control and they're putting down mulch and doing spring cleanups and getting into tree trimming. They got multiple sources of income and they're doing snow plowing, right? So I think that this is a really, uh, yeah, dude, you got to. That's the final thing I want to say in this video. You said that you're pulling your hair out because your phone's ringing off the hook and you want to, like how are you supposed to get to the phone and work at the same time? You can't do it, right? This is a top-down problem, a top-down opportunity. If there's not enough money coming into the business, enough profit margin, revenue and profit margin to be able to afford to hire a secretary and hire the people to do the things and to buy you the time to even put the systems in place to fix the shit. Because it's like uh, the chicken and the egg thing. Now, when I said money to buy you the time, you're like, well, if you put the system in place, it will buy you the time so you can make money. That's why it's a chicken and the egg thing. So then you're caught in the catch 22 trap. And these are where you start getting advice from guys like Lawn Care Millionaire and stuff. And, um, I mean, the way I see it, a guy like Lawn Care Millionaire, he's amazing. He's, he's my mentor. He's like our, all of our mentor. But he really is that one in a million type of dude whose IQ and intelligence and spatial IQ is so fucking brilliantly high. And, dude, I've watched videos where this guy has gone through absolute turmoil and hell to get where he's at. So by no means is he lucky whatsoever. That dude is the shit. Jonathan Potosnik is the shit. But, uh, you know, when I, after I watch his videos, I'm like, damn, dude. If it was that easy, then there'd be a whole bunch of lawn care millionaires, right? This is really, 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 really hard. And the cool thing I love about a lawn care or landscape business, it's a training wheels business if you think about it, because it's very forgiving. If you gouge someone's lawn, you can fix it. If you break a window, you can fix it. I broke a customer's window yesterday and had to pay 250 bucks out of pocket to fix it. Whatever. It's forgiving. There's mercy. If you over trim someone's tree, it'll grow back. Like it's not like surgery, you know? Why do surgeons make so much money? Because if they mess up, it's not, you can't fix it. <laughs> so how many people can are lined up to do the same exact thing that you can do? How long does it take to learn how to cut grass or trim shrubs or clean windows? I mean, it doesn't take a, a master's degree, so that's why there's not a whole lot of profit margin in it and you have to make up for it by doing a whole bunch of volume but you can't do a whole bunch of volume unless you go into debt uh you know by getting more equipment more employees more accounts more marketing and if you don't have all the systems in place to make all that work and it's not top down if the pricing isn't right to pay for all that infrastructure from the top all the way to the bottom through the high and the low and the hard times and you don't have enough leads coming in to be able to qualify to make the money that you need, the margins that you need to pay for a fully legitimized above board business without cutting any corners, right? Because I know some landscapers that have bigger businesses and they're cutting corners and dude, that shit scares the shit out of me. I would never ever even chance that, especially being on YouTube with my video being on YouTube. I just wouldn't even chance it. And so it's really opening my eyes up to what really goes on in the industry and in all industries in the commerce. It's set up against you. It's set up like that. I'm tying this all back because it's all tangential and connected to why would you feel stressed out if the phone's ringing off the hook trying to do it all at once? Well, how come you're not making more money so you could just hire someone to do that shit? Well, you're not making more money because you're competing against against a bunch of other guys that are doing the same exact thing, like a race to the bottom. Why is it so then you get into separating yourself? How much more, how much can you really separate yourself, right? So you have to make up for in volume. The three ways a business can make money, raise prices, lower costs, or expand. Well, there's other ways too. You can actually raise the average ticket price, which is part of raise prices. You can increase the frequency of which you visit the property. Can you be there more than once a week? 
or you can add more services, but then you add more complexity. You add more services, now you have more complexity, you have more things that the employees have to learn that will confuse them, and you're taking away the simplicity of the business, then you get caught where I'm at, where I'm doing fucking landscaping and window cleaning, because I dropped lawn care and picked up window cleaning. And now I have hundreds of window cleaning customers and we've raised the prices up to 300 bucks a pop and I actually make decent money at cleaning windows so I'm not going to stop doing that. I'm not going to cut off a whole, like cutting off an arm. Would you cut off your arm? So unfortunately we don't learn these hard lessons that don't become clear until a couple years into the business. You go, oh, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty. But what a beautiful opportunity it is to even learn all this stuff. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my long, long, long answer. Hire a virtual assistant. Hire a secretary for the busy, busy summer months when the phone's ringing off the hook. If the phone's ringing that much, raise your prices a little bit. Qualify those customers. Get voicemail transcribed to text. And then I know it's hard but literally pick out certain times and even let your family know, hey, when I get home from 7 until 10 p.m., uh, these two nights of the week, I'm going to be on the phone. I'll be doing paperwork. I got to get up early. I got to do this. Um, maybe you're at the point where you literally have to turn your truck into a mobile office and you're just going to be trapped in the truck. But I know for me, dude, like coming in the month of May and June, I can't do any physical work at all. So many customers are walking up on the phone. Dude, we've gotten, I've been on the phone 60 to 90 phone calls a day. Went on for weeks on end. I mean, dude, I literally had, I mean, I can count right now. Shit. Uh, today was a, a weird freezing day, so not a lot of calls coming in. But 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 calls yesterday. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44 phone calls the day before yesterday. It was a little bit sunny. And I was either on the phone call, getting a call from a customer, or calling call back, or even a family member. But they had 44 phone calls in one day. And the average in the summer is anywhere from 40 to 90. It's like, a, it's like a, so when the phone's ringing off the hook like that, it's like the nurse in World War II. Like all these bodies are coming in. These guys are like blown apart. And she's got to pick who's going to live and who dies. It's literally like crazy like that. So... I think the most important thing you do is just stay disconnected from not letting it hook you and throw you into what's called the swirl where you start getting panicky and feeling like, you know, it's out of control. But dude, if you only got one or two crews anyways, how much work can you handle? Uh, because it's weird. All What I mean is all the customers want you at one point and then nobody wants anything to do with you once the season isn't, you know, what, let's say September or August. It depends on your business. So, but you got to get it all while you can. That's the most important part. Most important part, especially if you got a family. Dude, like my wife knows, uh, come May, June, July, I'm working, I'm working at least 12 hours a day. Period. That's all there is to it. That's the time where we're doing, we do up to $30,000 a month, which ain't really shit. But we do, we'll do 30 grand a month in like June and July and just I got to rake it all in. I got to be everywhere at once. I don't go to bed till 1 a.m. I'm up at 7, 6, 7 a.m. Sometimes I stay up late editing videos. But um, because that's all that money that comes in that's now paying down the insurance policies. I'm getting money in the tax account. Everything's breaking and fucking up. We got marketing money. Um, like I might buy something new. And I've been in this is my seventh year in the business. Um, and still. I'm learning tons of tons of hard lessons and I haven't had just a whole shitload of money in the bank to the point where I could just start buying big shit. I'm really afraid to go into debt, by the way. I just spent uh, seven years paying off like $30,000 in uh, consumer debt and from getting sued and shit from a car accident back when I was like 24. And now my credit, I have 100% on time payments, zero debt, and um, 
749 credit score. So, dude, I'm afraid to go into debt. That's why I don't pull the trigger and start growing my business because I'm afraid. Like, it took me so long to get out of debt and risk, and I'm trying to press the reset button and really dial everything at a small level and get it all super dialed in. And then once I feel comfortable that it's dialed in and I really get it, then I'll, I'll start to grow it up if I choose. But I want to figure out how to get a really, really extremely profitable small small business with just a couple trucks. You know, a secretary, a couple employees, uh, a few virtual assistants, assistants, and we get busy oh, teaming up with subcontractors. Okay, but yeah, I know I'm going off the beaten path here. Hire a virtual secretary. Uh, right away and get her trained up it might cost you a few hundred bucks a month that's all and now you can handle get back to all those calls all right my friend later peace